Hey guys, what's going on? The kid is back here for another video review. You know what? I just wanted to go ahead and say screw it. I don't care. I'm not going to keep you guys in suspense too much longer. You guys have been so great. You deserve a video of at least one thing I got at the show. But before we get to that, there's something else I want to show you guys. Um, it's actually a question I have on New York Central Hudson. Uh, let's see here. If I can move it forward. Here's the problem that I'm having. The chuff rate, you can't do four chuffs per revolution on the Broadway Limited Paragon 1 Hudson. And that's a problem. And I honestly do not have to, I do not know how to change that to four chuffs per revolution. What I did was I went on the Broadway Limited website and I went on the Universal QSI Steam Decoder Manual. And it told me to change CV42 to, fun, or yeah, I think it was either CV42 or CV40 to function 12. And, uh,. I did that, then it said to go to CV54 and change it to some value which would equal it to 4 chest revolution. Now I switched it to several different values and when I get up to speed, my locomotive still doesn't have to go 4 chest per revolution. I can... Okay, maybe it does now, I don't know. It's I just have to shut off my DCC system or what? That's okay, so it's going close to four chests per revolution now, but it's still not perfect, and I'm a very nitpicky person. So if anyone knows the proper way to change the uh, chuff rate on a Broadway Limited Paragon One uh, New York Central Hudson with QSI um, with the QSI sound decoder, please let me know. Anyway, on to the actual review. This is what I picked up at the train show. Let me see if I can mute the Hudson real quick. There we go. Shut up. Okay. <laughs> you can probably hear it in the background. That's right, the Backman 440. Yes, that's right, another Backman engine. I couldn't help myself. This thing is freaking gorgeous. Wow. I mean, I have a lot of steam locomotives. You guys already know that. I have a lot of steam locomotives, but honestly, this one ranks up in my top five, I have to say. This engine is freaking awesome. I'm trying to think of what to say about it right now. It's so amazing. First, okay, first of all, let's. We always gotta do this. The story of how I got it. So I was at the show, right? And I was just, you know, I was wandering around. I was looking for a for a steam engine to buy. And there's this guy, right, in the, in the main vendor room, and he's got these. Uh, he's got the a couple of. He's got a few sound engines on his table. Most guys don't have a lot of sound engines, but uh, he's got a few sound engines on his table. You know, I went to go check it out. So you know, I go to his table, and I see that he's got a uh, 440. It's unlettered. Um, no, uh, no, not a lot of. Doesn't look like there's a lot of detail. Oh, there's detail, but it's not painted detail. It's basically one of those plain models. You know the ones where you just got to paint them yourself. One of those do-it-yourselfers. But um, it was still nice. It was a 440. I was looking at it and I asked him how much he wanted for it. He said he wanted 169. I said, is there any lower that he could go on? And he said, no. I said, okay, that's fine. So later on, I go to my uh, one of my local hobby stores they had set up here, White Elephant, our local White Elephant in the Valley, and those guys they had a 440 down there as well, but they wanted 200 and what was it? Two, around 230, somewhere around there, or 210, something like that. Anyway, um, those but those guys because I'm a club member, they uh, went ahead and gave me a discount. Uh, which is what's what's really great about the uh, lo local hobby stores around here is that if you're a member of a model railroad club, you'll actually get 10% off any uh, model railroad purchase, which I think is absolutely amazing. I'm uh, very thrilled that they do that. But these guys, they had a, they had, it was I bought it for them, bought it from White Elephant. They had a 440. As you can see, it's lettered. It's got nice uh, painted detail. 
the other one didn't have that, and I honestly think that it was worth the uh, extra money. And I, what did I pay? I paid, I think, 206, and he gave me a really good deal. Because um, there's another club member who uh, bought the same engine, and he paid quite a bit more than me. But they, so they gave me a special deal, and it was just really nice of them to do that. I was so thrilled to get it. And then I ran on a little test track that we had, bought some freight cars to put behind it. I haven't shown you guys those yet, but this is the engine. This is the engine that I got the show I was telling you guys about. And it is freaking gorgeous. There's a lot of gold paint on this train. As you can see here, it's may hopefully you can see on the whistle. The whistle's got this somewhat of a goldish paint, uh, gold paint to it. On the other side, uh, uh, there are all these valves, and the valves are connected to. Um, I forget what they what they are called. I think it was the invention that was made by Elijah McCoy to lubricate the locomotives when they're in operation. Um, but anyway, it's got two uh, two of those. Yeah, I believe that's what it is. But anyway, it's got two of those on the side of the boiler. Um, these two tube-like things. They've got gold paint on the uh, top and the bottom. That that looks really nice. Now, when you open this engine up in the box, what you're gonna notice is that there are three loads, uh, three different types of loads. So you got a oil, you got an oil burning. You can have an oil burning locomotive, a coal burning locomotive, which is what it comes as. Or you can have a wood burning locomotive. I switched mine to the wood burning locomotive, like the guy at uh, White Elephant suggested. He said it makes the engine pop a lot more, and it does. The the wood. I this is my only wood burning steam locomotive, and it is absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Okay, I just I just think he was right. The wood does make the locomotive pop. It gives it a different feel than the rest of my locomotives. Not just the fact that it's really really tiny compared to my other engines, like my Daylight and my Hudson. But this engine right here, it, because of the the wood load, it's just it just makes it different. It stands out. If you were to put all the locomotives next to each other and just have this one sitting there, it would stand out. Not only because it's the smallest, but because of this wood load right here. And the amount of detail that's on this engine is just absolutely amazing. Oh, you've got all this. I know you can't see it because my camera sucks, but you've got all this piping detail along the side here. What really impressed me, and this is what I really love, <clears throat> probably one of my favorite things about the locomotive, is that. On the side of the tender car, next to the wheels over here, you've actually got tiny chains that dangle down next to the wheels, like on the uh, real steam locomotives from this uh, from this era. They've got the little chains that dangle down next to the side of the wheels, and I just think that's a really, really nice touch that they did. They didn't even have to do that. I would have even noticed, but that's just a little bit of extra added oomph in there, which just makes this locomotive pop even more. You've got um, windows that stick out on the sides here look really nice. The win None of the windows open or closed, but that's okay. Um, what else do you have? Just a bunch of extra details. Just a bunch of added crap. <laughs> engine look but overall, guys, this engine looks freaking awesome. I would recommend it to anyone who's into steam era stuff. If you're a diesel era guy, you're probably not going to want it. Probably not going to want this kind of uh, locomotive. Uh, but I I would suggest it to anyone who's really looking for a nice steam engine to buy something a little bit out of the ordinary. Even if you're a diesel guy and looking for something a little bit different, if you want to go steam, uh, this might be something that you want to pick up. It's it doesn't pull as much as you know some of the bigger locomotives, but you know to pull a to pull a, you know nice short um, nice short line of freight cars behind it, it makes it really really look amazing. It makes it really stand out. Oh, you've got the Easy Mate knuckles on here. I like the Easy Mates. I might switch them out with KDs someday, um, but not right at the moment. For now, the Easy Mates are fine. This engine doesn't pull too much anyway, so there's no, really no reason to switch it out with KDs. But what really makes me love this engine is the sound. First of all, this backman, all backman spectrums uh, with DCC and sound, for as far as I know, they have uh, tsunami sound decoders. The tsunami sound decoder is absolutely amazing. If you listen, to the uh, idle sounds. Just wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. There you go. You hear that little? Sounds like it's breathing. That. Uh, it's completely different than the two other back one spectrum steam locomotives that I have now. I the way I buy steam locomotives, I like to have engines steam locomotives that don't all sound the same. I like all my steam locomotives to sound different. I only have two locomotives that sound the same as far as their idle sounds, and that's the Backman Spectrum 2662 and the Backman Spectrum uh, 280. They sound exactly the same, but as when they run, they sound completely different. The chuffing sounds completely different because there's one's articulated and one's not. 
this engine right here it's not an articulated um, but the chuffing sounds completely different than the chuffing of that of the 280 and they both have tsunami decoders and they're both backwind spectrums it sounds amazing I'm just gonna play a little bit of the uh, sounds for you here and you know what the bell on it I do like the bell it's different it fits the engine it's it makes it sound it gives that I'm a little tiny little engine that could feel and I really like it I'll go ahead and play it for you that whistle is great too that is just awesome Change the uh, <clears throat> the CVs in here with the chuff rate because the chuff rate's kind of uh, out of sync, and that's a big pet peeve of mine. I cannot stand steam locomotive that doesn't have a good chuff rate. Oh, also, a hawk out a little bit. <laughs> also, in case you guys haven't been able to tell, uh, I've done some stuff to the layout. I actually have an entirely uh, brand new layout. I'm gonna have to do a video of that at some point. Basically, like it was, if you remember my uh, videos from uh, last year around Christmas time, I had a double track mainline. I did that again, except it's bigger, um, and it's it's just so fun to be able to run trains at home again. Also, I bought a bunch of buildings at the train show. I'll show you guys those later. Oh, this is actually one of them right here. But I bought a bunch of buildings at the train show, and buildings just make the layout pop. I'm used to just buying rolling stock. It's so it was so worth it to invest fifty bucks in about maybe twenty or thirty so buildings. So it it was wow, what a great show. <laughs> what an awesome show. Uh what else is there to say? Pick up this engine if you can. It looks really nice. It sounds really nice. It's if you have steam locomotives it will it will definitely it will definitely stand out from the rest. What else? Oh, also, I bought some uh, e more some more easy track for my layout from a member of the train club. So I think I bought 13 straight sections and a couple of curves. So that's going to help out quite a bit. That'll help me expand the layout, make a bigger train yard. So you guys will be seeing that here pretty soon. That's going to make the layout look awesome. I, I'm gonna, hopefully, I'll show you guys the layout before I put those extra sections of straight track in. Anyway, guys, I'm going to the train club tomorrow. Super stoked get to see my man prognosis 2001 again he put up some videos of, of us running at the Inchome train club if you haven't checked that guy out do so he's got some awesome videos he just uploaded it is definitely worth subscribing to him he'll probably have some more up later this week or next week because he will be going back down to the club tomorrow night and we will be having a blast so with that being said I'd like to thank you all for watching once again the kid is back but the kid is signing out so as always, ladies and gentlemen, this is Road Kid 1937 signing out saying peace, God bless, and I'll catch you all later. Thanks for watching.